<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can replace the latches within your Joy-Con controllers for your Nintendo Switch. Now, big shout outs to one of my friends, WC Anyways. Uh, he had heard about me complain about the issue where my Joy-Cons were just kind of coming loose off the systems by themselves. Normally, it, a telltale sign is when you can just kind of push up on the Joy-Con itself, and when you do that, it just ends up popping off without you pressing the, uh, the release button right here. Now, these Joy-Con, thankfully, I'm not really having the issue with them. I did have it with my other set, which I ended up replacing the other night before, so now they're great. And I don't know if you all can really see that, but right there, you're going to notice uh, just under the button that it is shiny, because that is a metal latch. While it was on these, it's not shiny, it's plastic, because those are the pieces that get worn down uh, when you're sliding this in and out of the switch itself. So what we're gonna do to alleviate that issue is we're going to get rid of the plastic latches, replace them with metal ones. Uh, so I've done it so far, it seems to work just fine, uh, and you're just going to need to get a hold of a kit and do it yourself. So it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it's also not super difficult. You just kinda need to go slow at it, take some time, and if you know what you're doing, it should take anywhere from five to 15 minutes I would say. But first off, you're going to need a kit like this. Uh, now, I'm going to have different sellers for kits down below in the description, just from like AliExpress, eBay, and Amazon. And depending on how much you pay for them, honestly, you're probably going to pay no more than 10 or $11. That's like the most you would pay for one of these. These are definitely good enough for at least two Joy-Con uh, controllers. And on top of that, uh, it depends on what kit you might get. This one, uh, I paid just over $10 for, and it came with a tri-wing, a small Phillips head screwdriver, four of these right here. We just need two of them. Uh, but then it came with uh, extra screws, extra springs, and this other spudging tool. So I got this just in case I needed anything and just in case I thought I might lose some of the stuff. And I would recommend trying to get one of these kits that has, you know, the extra little bits and pieces because you might end up losing a spring or something like that when you're working on everything. So let's go ahead and get to work on these. So what you'll need to do, make sure your switch is completely powered off and we're not going to be touching the system itself, thankfully. We're going to be messing with the controllers right here. Uh, now you can work with either one of them, uh, but let's go ahead and work on the left one first. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Now when you unbox everything, you might have something like this. Of course, you're going to have the latches, you're going to have the screwdrivers right here. Um, I got a spudger tool included. If you want to use your own, you can. That just makes everything a little bit easier. And then, as I said, I also have about, let's see, four black screws and two springs, just in case we lose any right here. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is get started on these, uh, but just to be known, uh, two of these are for left Joy-Con and two of these are for right Joy-Con. Uh, they are keyed, so you'll be able to see which one goes with what. Uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and move this to the side and get started here. So, when you flip your Joy-Con upside down, there's going to be four screws, one, two, three, and four. These are the tri-wing screws. Uh, go, go ahead and unscrew them. It's pretty easy, uh, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, just keep that in mind. And make sure you don't lose any of these. With all of these removed, uh, what you'll now need to do is separate this. Now, you want to be careful because there are two ribbons that attach uh, this piece right here to the Joy-Con itself. And it is possible to put them back on, it's just really annoying to, to be honest, so it's just best to rather not do that. But anyways, what I normally do is I come up here and then kind of wedge the sponger in here like so. And as you can see, everything is getting separated. You can kind of come down here a bit and you barely, like I'm barely putting any force into this. I guess now I am a little bit more, but kind of just do that, go around. And now I'll kind of show you on this other side here what I'm doing. So there you go. They disconnect and that's what we're supposed to get. Just something like that. Uh, so as you can see, this is the rail that's actually connecting to the switch itself. There's all the components and then this is just, you know, the extra piece, so to speak. Um, but now go ahead and what I do is kind of just move this like so. And now we can work with it like that. 
Uh, now we're going to get out the Phillips head screwdriver. And just to annotate here, uh, this is one of the ribbons I was talking about, and here's the other one. So this is the one where I have unhooked this before, and if you do, there's just kind of like a latch underneath that you need to lift up. Very carefully slide this into place. Once it's in position, close the latch and you should be good. Uh, just try to avoid removing that, but I mean, if it happens, it happens. And the same thing here, this is also designed with a latch in mind. Uh, but all you need to do is when you come here, just find the one silver screw and remove it, just like so. Make sure you keep it elsewhere. And now what you can do is you can carefully remove this. So I'm going to just put that piece over to the side, and here we go. Finally, this is the last screw right here that we need to unscrew to uh, change out the actual latch, we can, which we can see right there. So for this, all we need to do, again, just unscrew this. And once that is unscrewed, keep it over to the side. And now we can start to remove this piece here, which I kind of like use the spudger and get in there just to lift it up. And notice you don't even really have to remove this metal piece completely, you kind of just need to uh, get it up and moved away a bit. So there, that's the method I normally use where I just kind of like bring it up like so. And now, as you can see, there is the latch and there is also a spring that's right there. I don't know how well you all can see that, uh, but you want to make sure when you're removing this, Make sure you keep track of the spring and try and remove this just to the point and an angle where the spring is not going to go everywhere. And this is exactly why I mentioned I would recommend getting a kit that includes extra springs just in case you end up losing your very tiny spring. So now just kind of remove this like so if we can. There we go. All right, kind of had to wiggle a little bit, but as you can see, the plastic bit is right there, and there is our spring. If you want to, you can reuse this spring. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm actually going to use one of the springs that came uh, with the kit here, but now we are good to go. Everything is cleared, so now we just need to install the new latch. So this is also how I talked about uh, these being keyed. As you can see, if you look at this right there like so, the way it is all positioned, you're going to look for where that little notch is, uh, where I'm pointing to with my other index finger. Uh, and then you want to find the matching one out of all of these. So I can tell it's already the top two right here. Uh, so I'm going to grab one of the metal latches. But again, just make sure you grab the correct one. One of them will be for the right, one of them will be for the left. So now what you need to do is grab your new latch, take the spring, make sure everything is fitting in there, and what you need to do is you need to get this loaded into the actual rail itself right here. So the way you can kind of do that is I'm gonna to have to do this at a odd angle, but kind of that's not gonna be the best way of doing it. What I've kind of done a few times is kind of just drop it in like so, and you can use one of the tools to just kind of Wiggle this around, get it pushed in. Make sure you're not going to like damage the spring, but just kind of like get it pushed in there. So this is much harder to do on camera. I'll also admit to that as well too, uh, but let's see if we can get it modified. All right, so there we go. What I kind of did was I had to um, somewhat like push this, push the spring against the latch and then slide it in. What you can do is once everything is in there, just kind of like poke it a bit, make sure it's actually installed in there properly. And that looks proper to me there. So now once that is all done, you can go ahead and reinsert this metal portion right here. Now there are two little tabs that this goes into, just make sure it goes properly into that, and then you can screw it all back in. So now with that jammed in, all you need to do is really work backwards. So again, remember that the smallest, well the last uh, black screw that we ended up using is gonna go in right here. All right, just like that. 
Now we can go ahead and grab this piece and good thing this happened, the button ended up popping out. Uh, the latch release buttons, uh, they are keyed as well too, so if you mix them up, one the left one only goes into the left one, the right one only goes into the right one. Uh, but just make sure you get it in there properly and it is lined up and you know fitting in there. Once that's been reinserted, all you need to do is kind of take this pop it back in place like so, and now use the only silver screw and install that back in there. And now, assuming your ribbons have not been removed, uh, what I even do is, again, this is why it helps to have these switch off. I kind of even just press one of the buttons, and as you can see, if all four of the lights come on like so, uh, that means that everything's successful with that. The ribbon should be in proper order. So, once that is done, kind of just take everything again, Make sure everything is lined up properly there, if I can show you. And squeeze it back in place. And with everything squeezed back in there properly, just re-screw it all. And there you go. Now the only way to tell from the outside this has been modified is if you kind of look at it from an angle, as you can see right there, instead of the gray plastic, you now have a nice shiny bit in the controller itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process on the second controller. I'm just going to speed up the footage and show you all right here with some music. I'm not going to be talking over that. And then once that second one is done, I'm going to show you all the end result and everything is working and, you know, hopefully we'll have happy fun time here. Alright, so now that both of the Joy-Con have been repaired, as you can see, they both have the uh, metal latches in there, or I guess replace whatever it might be. This one might be dead. I don't think it's been dead uh, as an effort of this repair here. Uh, just one of my Joy-Cons will always die faster than the other, but all you need to do is now grab your Switch and test them out. So first, let's check to see how they act. Go ahead and attach both of them on here. So now with them attached, they're really not moving around all too much, thankfully. And you now have a better release mechanism. And same with this. All right, cool. Now both of them are running here. And yup, uh, the right Joy-Con indeed is zapped of power at least not as a result from uh, the surgery we did but just because one of them will always die which is a little bit annoying so i'm gonna need to charge this thing up but anyways that is all you need to do right here for these uh, overall this is honestly a pretty easy repair modification replacement upgrade whatever you want to call it uh, as i said it just takes you know a few minutes of your time so uh, just be careful when you're working on everything i did lose one of the screws in this process which i was good on the other other ones but it was the very last one here I end up losing the screw on so or not the screw the uh, the spring so that's why I recommended at least getting a kit that has extra things in there just in case something like that happens but anyways this is Mr. Mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video a like would absolutely be appreciated if you didn't like it a dislike is fine as well too and if you have tried this let me know what your results are and what you think of the metal lashes uh, so far with my experience I've enjoyed them and I think it's definitely been a nice Nice small upgrade. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off real this time. Later, everyone.